Welcome to this workshop on sustainable transitions and circular economy. And um, I hope some of you might have come from the um, a high level session on the same topic where we were discussing system level change um, needed for sustainable transition and uh, using uh, circular economy as an example. And, um, and in the high level session, we were discussing it at the very general um, level, looking at science policy interface, and also getting a glimpse to sort of practical needs that, that we can see um, in the world and, and in Europe and in regions for, for addressing the sustainability transition and for, for connecting disconnected systems and also for motivating actors and, and empowering actors and, and generating uh, spaces for knowledge, uh, knowledge co-generation. So this event, this workshop is intended to follow up on the high level session. If you didn't go to that, you will be fine. We will um, guide you through and we will actually summarize a little bit what the discussion was about in the, in the previous one. Um, you can already go to Slido so that you um, are ready to put some questions and answers for us. And we will also have um, our questions for us to answer or our great panelists to answer. And then you can also then um, do some polls that we will have for you. Um, our idea is that we are quite interactive. But we have really great panelists rep representing the science policy interface in, in different ways. And, um, and so you will learn a lot from them, I am sure. Um, so do put questions, that's really important. And um, after, after this session, we still have other ways of um, connecting. So we, we can connect in writing or we can connect in a space that's a lobby like um, Wonder Me space. So this will be, this will be a good um, interactive um, opportunity to dive into the topic. Okay, um, I will soon um, introduce Dirk Messner, the president of German Environment Agency, who is in a key role hosting this session. Um, my name is Eva Primer. I'm from the Finnish Environment Agency, um, Finnish Environment Institute, which is a similar um, organization to all other environmental protection agencies behind this workshop. And um, first, I would like to ask you to go to the Slido. Um, and there is a poll, and uh, you can. I hope someone will put you to the uh, the Slido code for you to put. So that so you go to a web browser and you write the Slido.com and then you enter the code, which is Research and Innovation Innovation Days um, Workshop 19, but in R I D A Y S W S not one nine, but it will be written to you, so you will see that in the chat. Um, and in the poll, we ask um, whether um, for you to choose what, you, what is your main interest in this session, um, looking at sustainability transition and circular economy. So whether you are interested in sustainability transition, whether circular economy as the sort of um, connecting opportunity is your main interest, or linking research and policy, or all of these aspects to a similar extent. While you are filling your Slido poll, um, I will now invite Dirk Messner to um, summarize the high level session and the messages from there. So please, Dirk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much, Eva. Eva, I would like to focus on the issue of systemic transitions. And we discussed those systemic transitions from three, four different uh, perspectives. And I would like to mention those to kick us off. And the first element which we discussed is that now we have to focus when we talk about the European Green Deal, circularity, decarbonization, we have to think about entire systems and changing entire systems and understanding the interconnectedness between those systems. I mean, we talked about land use, cities and mobility systems, and all three interrelated. So trying to change these interrelatedness and, and implies that we have to understand this well. So one, this was the first perspective on systems. No? The mm -hmm. second uh, perspective was then that we mentioned, and Janosch made this very clear, Janosch, um, you made very clear at, at the beginning that we have to understand the irreversibly 
trends and irreversibly interconnectedness between the earth system, the ecosystems and human systems worldwide connected. And therefore, we need a specific type of research to understand, understand these kind of interconnectedness between ec ecosystems, earth system dynamics on the one hand side and human systems on the other hand side. The third element which then came into the debate was which kind of research do we need for that? I mean, high interdisciplinarity is obviously very important. We are talking a lot about that, but it's not easy to organize that. In our agencies, we bring economists and social scientists, engineers and natural scientists, earth system scientists together. This is part of our DNA. and This is highly important for understanding what I, I talked about beforehand. And then the last element, the fourth element was uh, how to work with actors. Because what is clear is that good science, excellent science, even excellent science with this kind of systemic perspectives, uh, understanding the dynamics of systems which are human made and driven and the earth system, all of that is not enough because we would, would like to trigger change. And therefore, how to work together with actors is something which is very important. Environmental agencies are boundary actors. We, this is part of our DNA again. We work with governments, we work with consumers and citizens, we work with regulators and this kind of joint learning processes and developing concepts for implementation. This is something which we reflect, reflected upon during our panel. Thank you, Eva. Thank you. And now it would be interesting to look at the Slido results, um, what the sort of, what the main interest of our participants are. And that is very small for me who has, um, <laughs> oh, I will enlarge my screen and do something about it. So um, most of our respondents are interested in the systemic approaches for sustainability transition, which is exactly what uh, Dirk was summarizing nicely. Um, and then almost equally many are interested in the circular economy. So this is um, right to the point. Um, better linking research policy and practice gets a little bit less interest and then there are those who are interested in all aspects so this is this is very good for us to know um when we go forward um let us see we have another slido poll mm. That uh, has um, that we can, you can already fill in, and we will read the results a little bit later. Um, that that looks at with, um, what is needed to achieve more systemic approaches towards sustainability transition. So you might have some um, experience or um, hunch, or you might have read somewhere um, what is really needed most. Um, understanding of all elements and linkages of the system, so understanding the system as a whole, as Dirk started mm, when he was describing the lessons from the previous session. Understanding the system boundaries, so understanding perhaps sectors or perhaps the public-private boundary, perhaps governance systems, um, or perhaps then these sort of disconnected material flows. So understanding these boundaries. Um, Collaborate, collaborating um, among actors in the system and the um, practical knowledge of the actors or a narrative example exemplifying the complex challenge. And so that's uh, because sometimes narratives can be really helpful in taking us forward um, with um, really big changes. So you can uh, fill the poll and while you are doing that, I will tell you that we have a, an interesting video coming up. Um, the video has speakers with different backgrounds um, and they have um, very practical experience um, at different levels and in different um, sort of um, areas connecting research and innovation with practice working on circular economy. And, and the contributors in the, in the video include Jutta Paulus, who is a member of European Parliament, um, Dominic Vogri, the Managing Director of World Economic Forum, Jakub Masur, President of Metrix, the Network of European Metropolitan Regions and Areas, and Franz von Houten, CEO of Philips. And, and there are also other really great contributors. So let us look at this video now and, and hear from these participants, or uh, distant participants. A lot 
is being invested in research to deliver green technologies that address the innovation change of circular value chains. Environmental Technologies Verification Scheme, or ETV in short. To maximize the utility of the scheme for the knowledge transfer and application, it needs to be linked with the environmental objectives and innovation policies under the European Green Deal on EU and national level, building on initiatives such as our Life Pro TV project. Because the circular economy offers a positive economic and innovation opportunity, but also because it's a critical lever for decarbonisation, getting to net zero and tackling all forms of pollution. We've helped drive this agenda through three dimensions. First, we've been building public-private leadership commitment and collaboration, for example, by launching the platform for accelerating the circular economy in 2018. Second, we've been driving material value chain transformation for plastics and electronics, to name just two examples, through the Global Plastic Action Partnership and the Circular Electronics Partnership. These draw together industry and governments to translate circular economy commitments in these value chains into practical action. And third, we've been scaling innovation through our Scale 360 initiative, because the fourth industrial revolution offers incredible potential for new technology solutions and circular entrepreneurship to emerge around the world. In Quest, over 20 partners are working towards mainstreaming the circular economy in Finland and implementing the National Waste Plan. The project is financed by the EU Life IP program. In the project, our research concentrates on measuring and producing data on the development of the circular economy. The results so far have shown that there is a clear need for regional data and we also need regional targets. We want to allow to use more and more recyclable materials instead of primary raw materials. That's what circular economy means. But that means also we need to guarantee the quantities which are needed by the industry. We have to guarantee the qualities which are needed and we have to do it um, on a price level which allows us to be compatible and successful in the competition. That's why we need the partnership, we need cooperation and communication between the different stakeholders of the circular economy. Waste management is the partner of the production industry of tomorrow. Our institute prepared a special development strategy for the city of Ljubljana back in 2002. We believe this was a solid base to enable a more sustainable, more just, more green and more productive development of the city. Ljubljana became the European Green Capital in 2016 and perhaps someday it will also become a European Just Capital. Circular economy can help us regulate our resource use and if we can get, get rid of such terrible ideas like planned obsolescence and focus on productive activities that actually help human beings lead a better life, then we can move as a society into the right direction so that the natural resources we all depend on will remain there, not only for us, not only for our children, but also for future generations. At Philips, we leverage partnerships to help scale the circular economy globally. For example, the public-private platform for accelerating the circular economy, or PACE as it is known, of which I am the chair, aims to stimulate market transformation for a circular economy at scale and speed, regionally and globally. Its mission is to drive collaborative projects to implementation and scale learnings through global leadership. We need a major overhaul of our policies from agriculture to industry so that we can keep climate change in, a, in levels that we can survive. Research and innovation will play a key role and we have to make sure that the Green Deal brings us back on the right track. From perspective of uh, metrics, we are working on metrics research portal that will facilitate the analysis and use of data collected by our members. It is important to share, expand, to be aware of the knowledge that is already existing. And this is uh, something that we are trying to put into action.
for scaling up existing knowledge among the region and local uh, authorities with our member territories covering over 100 million European inhabitants, we organized a workshop during the European Week of Cities and Regions. An agency on European level for circular economy could be helpful to be a platform from, uh, for the know-how from NGOs and universities to the companies and the administration. We need more transport of know-how, we need more communication uh, between the different stakeholders. Let's cooperate, let's unite, let's be aware of what is ahead of us. Have a great discussion, have a great meeting. That was very good. Good. Um, after having heard from all over the place, um, it will be good to look at who you in the audience, uh, what you in the audience um, think is the most um, important point here. So we will look at the Slido results. So collaboration of the system actors is, is clearly the most important or most interesting aspect and, and also most important uh, for system change. Um, and understanding of all elements and linkages of the system and understanding of the system boundaries and narrative uh, and a narrative is also considered important by some. Okay, um, with that knowledge in the background, we go now and have a, um, a panel discussion and you can write questions and, uh, in the Slido and some of those questions will hopefully be, we will have time to take them up. And we start with um, Hans Momas, who is the Director General of PBL Netherlands, uh, the environment, e Environmental Assessment Agency in, in the Netherlands. Um, and Hans, you could first tell us how your work relates to circular economy and sustainability transition and, and um, how you think that we could re improve research uptake among um, actors, practical actors and decision makers. Right. Thank you, Eva, for this opportunity and thank you for uh, moderating this discussion. I think it's uh, very challenging because it's a very complicated issue. And at the same time, it's an urgent one because, because we need a circular economy because otherwise we don't get to uh, the, the, the basic sort of challenges we are facing there. For us as, as, as PBL, uh, uh, we see this circular economy as the third pillar of, of making our environment much more sustainable. The first pillar being obviously climate change. We, we have to do something about our energy resources. We have to sort of renew our energy resources. We have to get rid of CO2 emissions. So that, that's the first sort of challenge, big challenge we're facing. The second one is, of course, the loss of biodiversity. I mean, I mean we, we are really facing a challenge there to, to get to a much better balance between our human life and the natural life around us. But we won't, we won't get to those two issues if we don't build in, in one way or another, the third pillar, and that's the circular economy pillar. We can't treat the climate issue and the biodiversity issue as isolated issues, because I think we really have to face transversal issues, and the circular economy really deals with that. We know that somewhere between, depending on how you measure it, 30 or 70% or even of, of, of emissions, CO2 emissions or, or greenhouse gas emissions are somehow related to the winning or handling of resources. And we know that by moving from, say, abiotic to biotic resources, we run into the problem of biodiversity and land use. So we can't get to the two challenges without also facing the third challenge, and that's the, the circular economy. Very good. Uh, we have good questions here from the um, from our audience. Um, one is that we know this, what you just described, but the policy is not taking it up. What could we do about that? Yeah, and, 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 and I think we have to tell to the policymakers that that is the issue, because in a certain sense, they don't yet realize that. So we, we have to use all kinds of models and analysis to make that clear. You won't get to net zero if you don't do something about the way we use and spoil resources. We have to get from a linear economy to a much more circular economy, and we have to develop policies with, to, to in, a, in a certain sense, facilitate and stimulate companies, but also citizens, 
to get to a much more circular reuse of our resources. Very good. Thank you, Hans. Uh, maybe we ask Dominic Darman de Drail, who is a Water and Global Change Program Director at the French Geological Survey, some of those questions that came up. Um, Dominic, you are a former secretary of the Common Forum and JPI Water Coordinator, and you have very rich experience in the, in the um, uh, science policy interface linking research and practice. And, and some of the questions that we have got have been um, about why we don't get there, but also how we, uh, how is the focus so much on single technologies or, or, or particular sort of um, focal points and not transversal in the way that Hans just described to us. And Dominic, I think you, you might need to activate your camera if you, if you have turned that off. Very good. Um, please. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, probably it's uh, it's back to what Dirk was saying. You know, as reporting back from the high level panel, the solution should be also systemic. So they are in the transition. They are in the interface. We in the past we focused on single problems, and now we need to leverage this and go to global and to this systemic approach. And it's much beyond what we have done in the past, uh, as you know, circularity, even circularity of the materials. It's, you have to go. If I'm taking the, the water, for example, uh, the, the risk related to water and the benefit from water, as it was mentioned by Hans on biodiversity, for example, are, uh, you know, measured outside the water sector. And you see that you need to be transverse by essence. So mm -hmm. all the society needs are really now, you know, uh, need to be think and thought, uh, uh, you know, as transfers. And then you need also uh, to report back to what Hans was saying. You need facts, you need evidence. You need to convince the people to, to act. And for that, you need data and you need validate data. And you need to bring this data into an information that can be used by the people that you want to convince either the policy makers or even the population because they will be as consumer you know uh, important actors and you need to build the trust also between the different actors if they are not they will not follow you and i think that's what i learned from the the two uh, work, uh, networks you mentioned uh, they were public public but in connection with the others and i was a researcher in between so Maybe I'm a game changer, I don't know, but I think that's something that you need to bring. All actors are important. Mm. Yeah, thank you for, for sharing that experience. Maybe maybe we ask Ander Elgoriada some of them. So uh, we also have in our panel Ander Elgoriada Kunze, uh, Circular Economy Project Manager from IHOBE, Spain. And we have been asked here um, many times that how to make circularity real. So maybe this is something that you could share when, with your more practical experience. Yes. Thank you, Eva. We are practitioners, so uh, we see that uh, circular economy is a policy instrument driven challenge, not a technological driven one. It's important. So circular regulatory and economic instruments are the real innovation drivers that creates the future European green markets. Let me point out two examples, the Ecodesign Directive and the Industrial Emissions Directive, two excellent instruments being just reviewed now. But really, very few actors in the private market and also in the public uh, administration understand the real implications on environment, economy and society of the existing and of the new instruments, neither in companies nor in public authorities. Even more challenging is we see a huge confused, uh, confusion in the private sector of where to go, of what strategies to follow. So we are constructing best practices with the, uh, with the front runners on a collaborative way to show the way. And even uh, very critical additionally is that the public sector needs new profiles to manage the complexity of this policy mix. Uh, th that is needed to reach circular transition. We see a huge gap of profiles in the public sector. Mm, very good. Um, I, I will ask Dirk Messner. Someone has asked that. How, how do we be, how do we believe in technology or or, or 
how can we change when the, when actually the economic system or the political system might need to be changed. But on the other hand, we also had a question on very operational um, changes. So if you could re reflect a little bit uh, on, on the sort of um, political economic system level change and then how that might connect to the, the very practical changes that are needed. Mm -hmm. Okay, Eva, complex question, right? I mean, my first point would be if we look at the circular economy issue, one thing with what we can learn from the non-progress we have seen, you know, because we talked about the very low level of recycling indicators still, you know, uh, we started as often end of pipe. So we have a fantastic, highly regulated waste management industry, but the material flows are still rising. And what we are saying is that we need to look at the whole system and at the whole value chains chain from the beginning. Also bringing the material consumption down, thinking much more about the design of products. So from, from end of pipe, this is our, our business as usual, usual model to systemic perspectives. My second point would be, um, and I'm coming back to what Hans Momas uh, just said. No, I would argue that the flip side of talking about the complexities which Hans described, so bringing biodiversity, circular economy and climate issues together, and I completely agree. No, The flip side of that is looking systematically for co-benefits. So how can we solve issues in the circularity yeah. field, which is at the same time help us to get solutions for biodiversity and climate? And there are many of those solutions, but we don't find them usually because we are looking at one of these different elements or, or dynamics or layers, no? because mm -hmm. climate and biodiversity and circular issues are discussed in different fora. So co-benefits, no? so from complexity management to focus on, on co-benefits. And my, my third and last point is that, I mean, this is what we are all saying and circularity is a good, <laughs> it's a good example for that. Uh, different actors have to do different jobs and have their responsibilities. You know? So it is about the producers, obviously. I talked about the product designs. It is about the regulators and the state, the right frameworks, not only end of pipe, you no know, looking at the whole system and the life cycle. And then it is also about science. So we have we have to produce solutions which, which bring up these kind of co-benefits. We also very often as politics are organized in these silos looking looking at different elements of the whole picture. Very good. Um, this is a, a complex matrix with um, Ander brought up the policy mix and, and uh, Dominic brought up the different act activities and you really showed how there should be a role division and um, that the, or that each of these actors will have their own role and then we will have the co-benefits that um, recognize in all of this. It would be interesting to hear if any of you have a comment. There was a question on what kind of platforms the actors who are interested in contributing to circular economy. If any of you um, recognize these kind of platforms that are the connecting platforms that could br bring these really big issues together. Could I? Yeah, Hans, please. Yes, yep, absolutely right. Because, because again, you know, there is this complexity. And, and, and on the one hand, we have to face that complexity because we have to take a systemic approach beyond single issues, beyond just, just if we're to come as the biodiversity issue or just, you know, we have, we have to integrate. But at the same time, we shouldn't get lost in the complexity. So, so, so that's, that's a challenge also for us as, as knowledge producers, as, as, as uh, environmental assessment agencies. And I think one, one way to prevent that is uh, to get to the position of stakeholders. So companies on the one hand, being organized in specific product groups, the groups of citizens on the other hand, regional governments on the other hand, they all are approaching the issue from their own perspective and from their own angle. And I think we should take those angles very seriously because in a certain sense, they can give us a way through that complexity. So what we are doing is, is actually looking at indicators and targets which in a certain sense could be helpful for groups of stakeholders to get beyond the point where, you know, it's just a nice thing to do, but where it gets really a good thing to do and a, and a sort of a sort of a no regret issue to get to a circular uh, e economy pathway. And, but, by, but, but by picking those indicators and, and targets based on how the different layers or, or the different elements of that complexity can come together, that's, I think, an issue. So we have to we have to think about 
circularity targets on the one hand, but at the same time, we have to think about uh, climate change targets and we have to think about biodiversity targets and we have to bring them together specifically for product groups associated with different groups of stakeholders or for regional governments, which are also looking for their own sort of package of indicators and targets which will help them to facilitate that circular economy. Mm. It really sounds so that a lot of the different sort of concrete actors and also the science policy actors, but very much the business and the and, and cities and the meaningful actors, producers and consumers all want the metrics. They all want this kind of like tools uh, to use. And that is where, where science um, scientists need to perhaps be humble and, and actually get, get roll their sleeves and, and start to work with, with very concrete activities. We would have a um, we will have really interesting people closing this session. But before that, I would ask the attendees to go to the Slido and there will be a poll on how you would like to continue this type of dialogue with the, this is just a little glimpse that we get today. And um, you could perhaps um, um, participate in, in different ways in how we uh, plan to carry this on. So um, if you want to send comments to us, if that's the way you would like to go, or if you want to meet uh, some of the participants of this workshop, or if you want to um, um, think about it for a while and, and not, um, not um, engage more uh, right at this point, or if you want to go to social media and, and share your views there. And we can already see the poll coming up and there's many ways people want to engage. Um, so for those of you who are interested in meeting the participants, the great news that I have to share is that there will be a Wonder Me space um, after this, this workshop and we jump there through our electronic uh, interface and, um, and there will be the participants of the workshop and there will also be a lot of the audience and, and you can continue having a chat. Um, for those who are who want to contribute in writing or 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 choose ways to continue, there will be a survey afterwards, and we will share those soon. Um, but now it's time for me to invite closing remarks. So I would um, I would I will invite Dirk to to say just briefly what you would like to say at the very end. And after that, there is Hans Brönings from the European Environment Agency, the Executive Director of Environment uh, EEA. And we also have Jean-Éric Paquet, the Director General of DG Research and Innovation here. Well, he has joined us a little bit later, but he has heard the, the end and he will hear this now and he will give us the last comment. But Dirk, you, you can start, please. Yeah, thank you, Eva. I mean, I will not try to summarize the discussion, which has been complex enough. No, I, I would like to say thank you first, because this has been a very important discussion for us, because we, we had the chance to present our work and the way we think, uh, how we could contribute to the European Green Deal and its implementation in the context of the dynamics in the European Union. No? This is my first point. The second point is I would like to thank also Jean-Marie, uh, jean jean Henri uh, Paquet, for having worked with us together and with his team to prepare for this workshop and to build these new kinds of alliances, because this is a non-usual alliance, actually. We, we try to present ourselves as environment agencies and import, as important science actors and boundary actors at the interfaces between science and policy, because we think this the knowledge we have and the networks we have might help to contribute to implement successfully the Euro European Green Deal, which is a very ambitious uh, project. And my third point is that we are obviously going back now after this discussion to have debates about developing very concrete suggestions and um, strategies, how we then could contribute to the whole process. So we, we are interested in unusual alliances. We will focus on the combination of different systemic dynamics. Hans Mummers talked about the challenge which we are confronted with. You know, the climate issue, the biodiversity issue, the circularity dimension. We might add the digital, the digital, digital dynamics which, which are shaping these whole processes. We are interested in these interconnectedness problems, in these interface problems. So this is what we are taking home from our debates today. And uh, we are promising that we are coming back with con concrete ideas afterwards. Very good. Thank you very much for your Thank you, Dirk. And then it would be interesting to hear Hans Brönings' view of 
summary or, or messages that you draw hands from from this discussion? Well, I think it's abundantly clear that uh, the focus on systemic understanding of the sustainability challenges that we face is is a basic uh, element of science now. And we, we are lucky that science in the last decade, two decades, has really contributed to understanding that systemic complexity. But we now are in what scientists also call a pivotal decade. So the real challenge now is to bring that science to those who are the agents of change. And that requires embedding science, in my opinion, also in knowledge systems, systems that are focusing on bringing the best understanding to those who have an impact in the public sphere or the private sphere or in the interaction between those two. And that is exactly what uh, environmental protection agencies are focusing on. They are large research organizations in, in a lot of countries. They tend to work in this connection between hardcore science and bringing knowledge in ways that are valuable and that are understood by those who have an impact. And if anything, I think uh, the partnership between are increasingly challenged also by the funders to illustrate that they they have impact, not only impact factors in scientific journals, but impact in society, and that they are participating with societal value in critical debates. That's where I think uh, environmental protection agencies can be really good partners to do that. So uh, we hope that through this panel, we can we can make the types of connections that can increase the impact because that's what it's all about impact we need to speed up and scale up solutions we need to understand options not only technological options we need to embed them in socio-economic discussions and we can only do that if we bring the best science to those who can connect to uh, the ones who have impact and are the drivers of change and we can be uh, a partner in that. I think that is the key message for me of uh, this afternoon's sessions. Thank you, Hans. That's very good. Um, for Jean Eric, before I give the floor Michael, to you, yeah, yeah. I just summarized that in our previous session we were talking very much about the science policy interface and how to connect different actors who are active doing um, doing um, practical work that can be very connected to the knowledge generation in itself and and then how to connect that with that uh, with our um, science policy if you like so so really the um, how, how science is done and how it's directed and in this session we have talked very much about the system level challenges so and and really connecting very operational questions measuring to then sort of societal system questions that are are political as well. So that's the, the little wrap up to you. And now it would be interesting to hear from, from you, Jean-Éric, um, what you would like to share on this topic of sustainable transitions and, and circular economy as well. Eva, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for a great moderation, by the way, also. I, I, I joined um, in the middle of the, of, the, of the webinar and I really enjoyed it. Um, I think, firstly, I'm delighted that we are teaming up with environmental agencies. Uh, we've been working uh, uh, over over a longer time uh, with Hans and his teams in, in Copenhagen, but uh, having the network of national agencies, I think, is absolutely key. Uh, they are knowledge-based organizations, and I think we need really to team up in uh, making uh, biodiversity, environmental, climate change, and solutions like circular economy uh, much more tangible uh, in this European context. I would argue that, um, I mean, there are two aspects which I would like to underline. The first one is I think that you should indeed never underestimate the impact you have when you present the science and the facts to policymakers. I've experienced it many, many times uh, where I see the, the atmosphere of a meeting change completely if it starts with a short presentation of where we stand uh, on indicators and on, on, on reality, facts on the ground, and science to project us into the future. It's information which we have, huh? but we don't have it necessarily completely uh, in front of us as we make policy choices. So continue to push the knowledge into these meetings, into these um, uh, groups of policymakers. It makes a deep, deep difference. 
Secondly, uh, the, the other dimension is that um, I think that um, the rollout of the European Green Deal is truly in the European Commission, and I think increasingly also in national governments, a cross-cutting effort. Yes, silos exist. This is certainly a, a function of big uh, organizations, and they are to an extent inevitable, but boundaries are more open than ever. And obviously, the digital uh, setup of the last 18 months has had real impact there also. But beyond the digital facilitation, uh, um, governments, the European Commission institutions are understanding that it is about systemic solutions, and therefore boundaries are creating trade-offs and not synergies. So that, I think, is more and more understood. And very much in the Commission, uh, Horizon Europe, which you, I'm, I'm sure you know, is co-created by very many parts of the Commission. There's no overall responsibility in my teams, of course, but that's not how it happens. It happens across the rest of the Commission, DG Klima, DG Environment, others are really shaping the choices made under Horizon Europe in this um, completely cross-cutting manner. The key question which uh, came through throughout the discussion which I witnessed is how do you connect that knowledge, that science, these solutions to deployment, to outcome? And I think here what we need to do more than we have done before is to be part of a broader setup in partnerships maybe, certainly under the Horizon Europe missions where, where we work, where scientists are there, uh, policymakers, including environmental agencies which are policymakers, and then institutional actors, citizens, industry, you need to cut across and have these actors around the table and work then on deployment. This is what I, I am certain we will achieve with the Horizon Europe mission. They are, I, I mean, the knowledge certainly exists in, in our audience today, but for example, 100 climate neutral cities by 2030 or 75% of the health of our soils restored by 2030. So very concrete outcomes, which are not science outcomes, but where we connect scientific uh, research for knowledge and solutions with deployment. So from the outset, the conversation is not about the science, it's about the science connected with all these actors mm -hmm. for deployment. So it's, it's a platform of, of large scale experimentation, which I think is very much what was discussed now in, in, in the meeting. So let's team up also around these missions um, to, to showcase how indeed knowledge and solutions can connect with reality and then accelerate the transformation which we are all promoting. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. This was very good that you instructed us to push through the boundaries. And we can use that metaphor in all of the different um, system boundary um, problems that we have identified today in, in thinking of how we could really push through. And it's not just uh, it's not just like dental poking. <laughs> so that was that was a good idea. Um, I'm still I would still ask one question from you, Jean Eric, that if we have someone who is not engaged in the partnership or in the missions, like you have the sort of upcoming new actors or, or those who are just not um, in the sort of um, circles, what would be your message to this type of actors? Connect, be in touch. Uh, I mean, on the missions, there's going to be absolutely no limit huh? uh, around these 100 cities, around the, the soils, the oceans, we need mobilization in regions in Europe, in cities in Europe, in all member states. And we also hope to see many research communities aggregate beyond Horizon Europe itself to ensure that these missions deliver. So when they will pick up, and I, as I, as I told you, I am really very optimistic that they will pick up, they will become very visible, and I hope will also attract uh, many additional actors. So connect and, uh, and, and, and be in touch. Uh, we want this to be a broad effort. On the partnerships, this is also true. The partnerships, of course, are slightly more institutional construction. Uh, so uh, certainly in terms of research deployment, there will be very open partnerships with, with work programs and calls uh, in, in which you can uh, participate. But we have discussed it with, um, with indeed the heads, um, I mean, with Dirk and, and, and other heads of, uh, of national environmental agencies. I see an important role for agencies in the steering of the partnerships. Exactly. Uh, the partnerships mm. are not, again, they're not about science only. Huh? They are about ensuring that science can then be deployed and make a difference. 
So you need regulatory authorities. You need uh, very good the agencies. Now, uh, apologies that we are running out of time. Don't so it's, it's fourteen past. So it's it's great, and this actually brings us to our like next opportunities to link. So you can still the participants to this workshop. Thank you, Jean Eric, and this is a very. Um, you can join us in the Wonder Me space afterwards, and you can fill in the survey. And so this is a, our way to continue the dialogue. Or another way is just to be in touch with your member state environment agency um, whom we represent who have hosted this event today. So thank you very much, everyone, and see you in the Wonder Me space if you have time for that. Kitos. Kitos, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.